Mark Asuobi is the Legislative Liaison Officer of the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria. He gave the CPLO FX training course an overview of extractive industries in his country. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, it's morning here, and I guess it's morning there too. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Asuobi. I'm the Legislative Liaison Officer for the Catholic Bishops' Conference of Nigeria. Regrettably, I'm not there with you physically at the moment, and I guess you are having uh, uh, a good time out there with the training, but I'm glad I'm able to connect uh, with you today. I'll go ahead to just share briefly uh, the profile of Nigerian as it has to do with mining sites in Nigerian and the environmental impact. Um, basically, uh, I'll be taking a very brief introduction, then uh, may not bother much about meaning of the, uh, mining definition. We'll look at common minerals in Nigerian, mining sites in Nigerian, mineral deposits in Nigerian, and types of mining. Then look at the environmental and the social impact of exploration in Nigerian, then some suggestions on remediation options, as well as conclusion. Can you hear me, please? Yes, we can yes. hear you, Mark. Good. Uh, mining, like you all know, uh, uh, is the removal of minerals and other geological matters, as well as economic value from their deposits under the Earth's surface. Materials dug out of the earth characteristically constitute a destructive industry. As the effect of a single mining operation can have a severe impact on the environment generally. Although there are regulations in effect to cope the damage, they are however not enough to make mining and other ecological resources like wildlife for example, to coexist. This is especially so when there is no political will to back up the enforcement. Exploration of solid minerals in Nigeria should sustainably take care of the economic, social, and sociocultural needs of the Nigerian while balancing the ecological elasticity. Common minerals that are found in Nigeria, as you can see there on my screen, we have tin, we have columbite, we have gold, we have colbat, we have marble, we have limestones. These are spread all over Nigeria. In fact, research have long identified about 40 to 50 different untouched and unsorted after precious subterranean elements in Nigeria. The crux and context of my paper is to understand the world of Nigeria in terms of solid mineral potentials and the impact this world has in the human space continuum in the country. It assesses the impact of mining and mining sites on the environment and ecological sustainability, social interaction and security as well as economic viability of the surrounding communities and regions all over the country in Nigeria. The mining sites, as earlier mentioned, for those who are uh, familiar with Nigeria and those who may have read much about Nigeria will be found in, we have large swaths of minerals resources spread across Nigeria from in Jos, we have the tin and columbite. In the northern part of Edo state, we have lead. In the south and in Enugu, which is the eastern part of Nigeria, we have coal. In the eastern part, of, uh, in the east around Ogun, we have the limestone. And then in the west, we have stories of the negative effects of mining on the environment and all that abound. Records have shown that 
the solid mineral deposit is the second major source of pollution, which is more than oil, crude oil, which for now emanates, emanates lots of pollution in the country. One of the factors that is always associated with mining operations is the population pool tendency, which most often exert pressure on the already stressed environment as a result of oil pollution. Because local artisans are always ill-equipped with expertise, machineries, and then lack of laws or regulations governing the operations and the environmental standard. These have largely not helped the situation because of lack of laws and then standards to be able to regulate. If you can see the chart that I have there displayed, it is showing us where mineral deposits are found in Nigeria, the minerals, the locality where you can get them, and then the level of exploration as it's currently ongoing. You have bats here, they are dotted all over the country, and then the level of operation here is in large scale. And then we have birds in Enugu, it's in small scale. We have clay in Ijiro Ekiti, in Jos, that is Plateau State, and then also in Fanasa. And then we have coal in Nkalagu, it is, uh, it is exploited in large scale. Nkalagu is around the eastern part of the country. And then we have construction sand. The deposit of this is largely in Jos and in Akwanga, which is in North Central, cross in North Central Nigeria. We have the construction stones that are found in Jos Plateau and large deposit of them too in Cross River State, where you have the Obudu Cattle Ranch. These are exploited in small scale at the moment. We have the lead spades. This is seen around all uh, dotted around. Uh, the different states in the country and in small scale. We have gold. Gold is, you know, found in Zamfara, Birinim Quarry, and Osun. Zamfara is in the northern part of Nigeria where you have very high scale of insecurity and the Boko Haram region. The exploration is in large scale. We have gypsum all over the Federation, and then we have iron ore. This is found in Itakbe. It's also exploited in very large quantity. We have lead. You'll find lead in also the communities there, but exploration is still, you know, uh, in small scale or medium scale, so to say. Then limestone, marbles, bonazites, sulfurous. We have tin, tourmaline, and topaz. Here is a map showing the distribution of some solid minerals in Nigerian. Um, Mark has the presentation there, and I'm sure he can share it with you so that you are able to identify and you see that mineral deposits are almost spread all over the states and the regions in Nigeria, as you can see in that map. I had earlier mentioned before the types of mining. I mean, these are the types of mining that uh, are ongoing in Nigeria. Mining can be divided into three based into three based on the processes that are involved. We have the open pit mining, which is almost like the rude or local type of mining. Here, mining is done in open pit. It is one of the most common forms of st strategic minerals that are available in small deposit. This is the most common form of mining in Nigeria because of the crudeness of the technology. And you see this in most part of the, in the northern part of the country. And then we have the underground mining, which involves large scale movements of waste rocks and vegetation. These two forms are believed to have the potentials for tunnel collapse and land subsidence. This is where lots of lives are put at the risk the underground mining. And then there is also the in <clears throat> the in situ line mining, which is done underground and is believed to have environmental and safety superiority 
over the other two, that is the open pits and the underground mining that is that takes place. If you take a look there on my screen, you will see I have identified some environmental and social impact of exploration in Nigeria. We have the air pollution, we have the water pollution, we have the vegetation loss and deforestation, we have the landscape degradation and then the soil erosion. We also have conflicts and insecurity that is associated with much of this uh, impact of mining. Environmental and social impact of exploration in Nigeria. Let us look at the air pollution. During blasting, exploration and crushing of large scale is found. Particles are released into the air and are spread by the wind. These dust particles are minutes, are minutes and are less than 10 microns as air particles. They present health threats to people especially and particularly to ch uh, children within the locality. At maximum level of exposure, there are inhalation, respiratory disorders, solicosis, and lung diseases manifest due to occupational hazards. The gold mining activities is no doubt the major cause of solicosis and solicos, tuberculosis, that, that has been reportedly that has been reported in mining areas around the northern part of the country in Nigeria, like Zamfara State, and then in the west in Oyo, in Ishagu, and in Ayingba, where dust from gold mining site has high silical content, and this affects uh, human lives generally in this location. We also have the water pollution. The memory of the dead of over 200 children around Zamfara State some five years back due to this, uh, uh, due to pollution of water. This took place in Nigeria in 2010. It remains very fresh in our memories and really, really was quite aching, you know, this situation had taken lives and is still perennial and ongoing. In a study in Itakwe, Kogi State, over three decades of iron ore exploration have been implicated as a cause of gastrointestinal irritation, catharsis, dehydration, dry skin, and coloration of teeth to the populace. The heaping of mine waste uh, telling, telling presence public, it, it affects very seriously and has served as a threat, especially within these areas where waters are polluted in very high, uh, 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 the, the high traffic activities. As these events occur, the water turbidity or acidity level gets elevated and then it makes it unfit for aquatic life and domestic use. So you see a situation where a state or a community is surrounded with, 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 a, with water from the river, but yet they find it difficult to have consumable water because of pollution that is around the locality and the activities that are ongoing. We also have issues associated with landscape degradation and soil erosion. This also is very, very perennial in most of the areas in Nigeria. The presence of thousands of abandoned mine pits as observable in Joss area, Joss played to you may have read about Joss mining zone, has dealt harshly with the serenity and aesthetics of the region. The destruction of natural landscape, create, landscape, creation of pits and indiscriminate dumping of heaps as observed in Imeke, Igara, and Ikpashi 
where granites, quarries, and marbles, and marble quarries are exploited, are a good examples of this uh, uh, challenge that is dotted all over the country. We also have issues of conflict and insecurity as a result, as an impact of this of mining activities. Since most of the mining in Nigeria is not controlled or regulated or regularized, a number of activities are carried out by illegal mines and miners. And this brings about a very serious percentage of people that are of different character and then different backgrounds coming together. And then, you know, they, 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 in the process or in the context or pretense of mining, uh, they, they, they regroup and then they are able to form militant groups that begins to, you know, inflict pains, attack local population within that environment from these mining created activities. Like in other parts of Africa, criminals have profiteered in the sector at the expense of the vulnerable communities. Powerful politicians working with non-state actors and most foreign corporate concerns have collaborated in fueling violent conflicts, petting local communities against each other. In other cases, the sponsor bandits with links to terrorist organizations to push the violence to the stage of national security crisis. Over 500 people have been killed in the last five years in just Zamfara alone, and because, and because perpetrators have gained impetus and have endeavored into cattle rustling, which is a common uh, ag agrarian or agricultural produce in the area. So cattle are being rustled. by most of the uh, bodies. The death toll associated with the mining violence cannot be fully ascertained in Kaduna in, uh, uh, and then in Niger State, which is somewhere in the north, uh, northeastern part of the country. Government ban of artisan and gold mining in some areas in Zamfara and Kaduna has however yielded a little result, but to a large extent, serious havoc is being carried out there and a lot of people are displaced. Local communities are displaced. Lots of refugees found all over the area. As a matter of fact, most of the communities who suffer internal displacement in the regions were initially communities around the mining sites. I, I have gone ahead to make some suggestions, possibly, on uh, the options that could be alternatives to be able to have some form of mining activities going on simultaneously and in such a way that it could be productive and then can encourage healthy living. The first step in steaming the tide uh, of the environmental impact of mining sites in Nigeria is to strengthen the environmental regulatory body. In Nigerian National Environmental Standards and Regulations Enforcement Agency, NISRA, is that agency of the Ministry of Environment that oversees the impact of commercial activities on the environment. If, NIS, if, if NISRA is strengthened, it means they are reject with the needed manpower capacity to prompt monitoring, monitoring of mining activities across mining locations. Two, they should be able to build a mass mobilizing uh, uh, projectories and projection, especially for the rural Nigerians who are custodians of these activities supposed, and then they are supposed beneficiaries of the mining site. I also look at section one, subsection one of the 2007 
It gives sole ownership and direct control of mining and mining processes to the federal government of Nigeria. Remediations and advocacy against conflict and insecurity occasioned by the mining should start from streamlining ownership and control of the mining concerns. A situation where government at the center, the federal government, takes ownership of mining that are in very in, in, in community, and then communities are not taken, are not part of processes. It creates friction, and then this friction will always lead to crises that could skyrocket. So if these laws are rejected and regulated, it can bring about a kind of understanding which will lead to gatekeepers in local communities and the government alike, and even foreign interventions and foreign investment will be done in such a way that the collaboration will not bring about crisis. Bans alone don't, don't just cut into it, but mining concerns needs to be registered outfit so that if mining has to be done by local uh, local individuals who are gatekeepers or community leaders, it must they must be registered so that activities are regulated and then monitored by regulatory agencies in such a way that people can be held responsible if people who are involved in these activities are noted clearly. There is also the scientific approach, you know, to these environmental hazards that could run some form of indiscriminate mining. This involves the utilization and then the biotechnological approaches for reclaiming of devastated environment, also known as phytoremediations technique. The efficiency of physical remediation techniques depend to a large extent on the soil properties, the type of contaminated uh, contaminant, and its bioviability. In more advanced society, the technique has had far-reaching positive impact. For example, in the U.S. 200 radiobiological sites have been restored using this approach. This can be achieved also in Nigeria using a high biomass crop like the poplar, wallow, and jatropha crops that would you know, use possibly as a replacement in, in, in this context. Africans artisans and small-scale mining side huge development potentials. And the minerals have been a big source of, you know, uh, exchange for nations. Nations, especially like South Africa, the Congo, Namibia, and a huge source of conflicts too that are associated with them. In Nigeria, much has not been reached in terms of development for local peoples around mining sites. Furthermore, there is the growing concern of the environmental impact of mining, which majorly pose diversity to the health economies of the locals around the mining fields. In conclusion, there are also socioeconomic impact that are associated with poverty induced, which are poverty induced by the mining, mostly on the foreign corporation who clandestinely carry out mining would help from powerful politicians. And then they get, who gets the profit as feedback at the expense of the local, of the locals, at the expense of the poor, at the expense of the vulnerable. If you go to most states now in Nigeria, like Cross River, you see a lot of activities of deforestation. And this is done in such a in such crude way that um, uh, uh, there is logging, and then the roads are unkept. A few roads that were good as a result of trying to evacuate the locks from the forest that are done are also being destroyed. 
and people are left in hunger uh, uh, and in, in very serious abject poverty. So you, you discover that uh, situations and such environment remain so lawless that the need for to adopt eco-friendly scientific approaches, peace advocacy, that will be able to streamline ownership of property and rights for the correction of these abnormalities in our society cannot be overemphasized. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark.